I was reading this book called A Billion Wicked Thoughts that was written by a bunch of engineers at Google and they were looking at billions of search, uh, billions of Google searches. And you know, there's no shortage of pornography on the internet. And, it, and there's much less by proportion than there was when the internet was first invented. And it's so interesting because it actually turned out that one of the things that drove the development of the internet and the technology was the proclivity of young men to search out sexually provocative images. That was what was at the forefront of the development of the net. It's extraordinarily interesting. They were motivated to use it for that purpose and that provided the platform from which it emerged. Amazing. Anyways, the Google engineers looked at pornographic search processes and then segregated male searches from female searches and what they found was that the male searched out images surprise surprise no one no one considers that you know particularly interesting but the female searched out literary representations of pornography it was written and so i can give you an example of that if you know about harlequin romances does everybody still know about those anybody not know about those okay well they're mass market romances and of, of a very stereotypical type and uh, the original ones were pretty harmless in in terms of no violence and no real sexual content. But that was 40 years ago and they've differentiated tremendously and now there's hardcore Harlequin romances and with particularly garish covers and then there's the old, you know, more tame, basic sexless and aggressionless romances where everything is implied and not explicit, but the explicit ones exist. So they did a plot analysis of the typical pornographic female fantasy. Well and they discover things that way and so they discovered the basic plot of the female pornographic literary product and they identified so basically what happened was that a innocent well-meaning and attractive young woman encounters a male who's a bit of a monster and the monster there's five types of classic male monster for all you males who want to know this is what you can become vampire that's a good one werewolf billionaire pirate and surgeon okay so that's very interesting because well first of all there's a dominance thing there's a now you're actually blushing you know you're actually blushing about that that's very very funny so <laughs> sorry to point it out but it's so comical you know pirate vampire oh that explains it what about all these damn vampire shows right they're so popular online they're so popular on netflix oh yes and then there's the werewolf there's nothing sexier than a werewolf apparently but i mean so there's predatory dope there's predatory dominance that's implicit in that right with the billionaire it's more abstract but clearly that's an indication of very high success in the male dominance hierarchy so but there's this desire for aggression that's in that a real aggression right and it's not surprising to me to me at all it makes perfect sense but the basic plot is that the woman encounters this mysterious and aggressive male and tames him that's the female hero myth as far as i can tell it's beauty and the beast and so it's because well there's no fun in taming someone who's already tame and what makes you think you really want someone who's tame anyways there's no interest in that plus when chaos manifests itself what makes you think that someone tame is going to be good for anything? And it's a real question. And so that aggression is absolutely vital. It's absolutely necessary. But because it's inc incredibly dangerous, which of course it is, it has to be civilized. And so what happens is that the archetypal female in these pornographic romances seduces and tames the aggressive male. And that's her encounter with chaos. Of course, females, they're more complicated. And that's exactly how it is. And it's no wonder because they're... Their lives are more...